Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mungli. Today I am going to review on amino acids. So there are 20 standard amino acids and all of these 20 standard amino acids so they will be having specific codons and they will be part of polypeptide chain. That's the definition for standard amino acids. So any whenever you use a name standard amino acids so standard amino acids will have a codon and they will be part of polypeptide chain. There are some non-standard amino acids which are basically derivatives or which are basically the part of metabolic intermediates and they won't be part of a polypeptide chain. So the, those are all non-standard amino acids. So the standard amino acids will be part of polypeptide chain and they will be having codons. Now each of those 20 standard amino acids they all will follow one common thing and that is they have got alpha carbon in the center they have got carboxylate group and they have got amino group that is NH3 plus they have got H and they have got side chain which is denoted as R or group. Now before I get into individual amino acids let's understand why carboxylate group is COO minus why amino group is NH3 plus okay in order to understand this we need to know the pKa of carboxylate group present in amino acid. So on an average carboxylate group pKa is approximately 2 and for amino group the pKa is approximately 9.5. It varies from amino acid to amino acid but on an average it is 9.5. Now in order to understand why carboxylate group has underwent deprotonation and why amino group has underwent protonation you need to know the relation between pH and pKa. I have made a separate video on relationship between pH and pKa in res with respect to amino acids. You can watch that video there is a link above here so you can click the link and watch the video to understand the relation between pH and pKa. Overall in to say it simple so whenever our pH that is the blood pH is 7.4 so when the pH is more than pKa means our blood pH is 7.4 and pKa of carboxylic great carboxylate group is 2 so when the pH is more than pKa there will be deprotonation deprotonation means proton is released it means the proton in the carboxylic acid group is released as H plus and carboxylic, carboxylic acid is now existing as carboxylate and that is COO minus. Okay, that is why your primary carboxylic group is existing as carboxylate COO minus carrying negative charge. Now let's move on to see the amino group. So the pH and pK relation again comes in. So pH blood pH here is 7.4 and the pKa of amino group is 9.5 that's a pKa of amino group is 9.5 so it means pH is less than pKa whenever pH is less than pKa it means the group will undergo protonation why this happens it's because pH has got means the solution has got more protons compared to the groups that is why group will be protonated so there will be protonation protonation of the group will occur it means the proton that has been released by carboxylic acid and that is the same proton which can be protonating NH2 into NH3 plus and because because of this pH and pK relation here so the primary carboxylic group is deprotonated and primary amino group is protonated that is why our amino acids predominantly they exist as carrying one positive and one negative charge and net charge it will be zero other than the acidic and basic amino acids and they are that is why referred as zwitter ion okay with this basics let's move on to see 20 standard amino acids so here is the 20 standard amino acids so their structures are given here so the first amino acid is glycine 
we have glycine here and you can take a look at the side chain of glycine it is just h so and also note that glycine is written with three letter abbreviation g l y so whatever the amino acids that are shown here so they are shown as carboxylic group and amino group whereas in reality this carboxylic group will be deprotonated as coo minus coo minus here and amino group will be protonated as nh3 plus so we have a glycine so this glycine is the most simplest amino acid out of all the 20 standard amino acids and it is its molecular weight will be very less so that is why glycine is can be accommodated wherever small little space is available in amino in a polypeptide chain to give you an example in collagen amino acid sequence is glycine xy so it means with a proline is going to leads to bends in a polypeptide chain and just besides proline you most of the time you see glycine now coming with the alanine our next amino acid is alanine and the methyl group is the side chain there so alanine methyl group is hydrophobic so alanine is an hydrophobic amino acid as like that of glycine now our next amino acids here are valine leucine isoleucine if you if you take a close look at these three amino acids side chain specially so valine it has got a branch here and leucine has got a branch and isoleucine has got a branch that is why these three amino acids are referred as branched chain amino acids so we have three branched chain amino acids valine leucine and isoleucine now let's take a look at proline so proline has got a primary carboxylic group but it doesn't it do not have primary amino group because primary amino group here is interacting with the side chain and it has made a five membered rigid ring that is why this amino group here in proline is called as secondary amino group out of all 20 standard amino acids only proline has got secondary amino group and proline since it has got a rigid ring so it cannot be accommodated well in a alpha helix that is why proline is referred as helix breaker now let's move on to see other group of amino acids here so take a look at methionine and cysteine both of them now the methionine has got sulfur here and the cysteine has got sulfur only difference here is sulfur present in the methionine is not free whereas the sulfur present in cysteine is free it means it, it has got a thiol group there and that can interact with the neighboring cysteine molecule and make cysteine by forming disulfide bridge so there are two sulfur containing amino acids one is methionine other is cysteine now let's move on to see other amino acids here so we have serine and threonine if you take a look at the side chain of serine and threonine both of them they have got hydroxyl group that is why serine and threonine are hydroxyl containing amino acids along with there is one more hydroxyl containing amino acid here and that is tyrosine tyrosine is an hydroxyl containing amino acid importance of hydroxyl containing amino acids is they will participate in post translational modification of a protein molecule the examples for post translational modification is phosphorylation most common reversible post translational modification or it can be glycation addition of carbohydrate or it can be addition of uh, lipid that is lipidation whenever post translational modification is going on majority of time it is the hydroxyl containing amino acids that are preferred now let's move on to see other category here so aspartic acid and the glutamic acid in reality they exist as aspartate and glutamate in deprotonated form side chains so both of them they have got acidic like carboxylic group in their side chain and that they can they will undergo deprotonation under physiological ph 7.4 and that's why they will carry net negative charge and that is why aspartate and glutamate they are referred as negatively charged amino acid now let's see the asparagine and glutamine if you take a look at the asparagine and glutamine side chain so both of them are polar but they do not carry any net charge under physiological ph so they are unch neutral amino basically they are referred as neutral amino acids polar but neutral 
now let's move on to see other group here and that is lysine then we have arginine and histidine all the three of them lysine arginine and histidine so all three of them are referred as positively charged amino acids or basic amino acids because at their physiological ph they carry net positive charge so let's take a look at histidine here so the pka of side chain pka side chain pka of histidine is 6 when it is isolated and the side chain pk of histidine when it is becoming part of a polypeptide chain so it will convert basically it will be changing into 7 and that 7 is equal to almost nearer to 7.4 physiological ph that's why histidine it will exist as 50 percent protonated and 50 percent deprotonated this is the reason why histidine is acting as a physiological buffer so whichever the protein which has got high concentration of histidine so histidine is acting as a physiological buffer because it has got ability to donate and accept protons so it is acting as a buffer here in a polypeptide chain that's an importance of histidine there now let's move on to see three amino acids which contains aromatic ring here so that is phenylalanine tyrosine and tryptophan all three of them they contain aromatic ring that's why they are referred as aromatic amino acids okay so like this we have classified amino acids based on their side chains and also we have seen the characteristics of these amino acids here so let's classify these amino acids based on their side chain in specifically whether they are soluble in water or whether they are insoluble in water and that is i'm going to classify amino acids now as hydrophobic amino acids and hydrophilic amino acids now the hydrophobic amino acids are the ones which are which hate water so they don't they are not soluble in water whereas hydrophilic amino acids they are soluble in water they are able to make hydrogen bonds with water molecule and keep a protein in soluble state okay now let's see what all the hydrophobic amino acids so hydrophobic amino acids are we have glycine alanine valine leucine isoleucine proline methionine all of them are hydrophobic now apart from them so we have phenylalanine which is a hydrophobic amino acid and tryptophan which is also hydrophobic amino acid okay so it is it is weakly positive basically it is weakly polar but I would like to classify this tryptophan into more of non-polar than polar amino acids. So we have here glycine number one, alanine that is number two, valine number three, leucine number four, isoleucine number five, proline number six, methionine number seven, phenylalanine number eight and tryptophan number nine. So there are nine hydrophobic amino acids and you all need to memorize all of them glycine alanine three branched chain amino acids valine leucine isoleucine proline which is a amino acid methionine sulfur containing amino acid phenylalanine tryptophan two aromatic amino acid here out of three all of them are hydrophobic and note that hydrophobic amino acids in a globular protein they are safely buried in the interior core whereas in, whereas in the membrane protein hydrophobic amino acids will be present wherever the protein is spanning the membrane okay so these are the details about hydrophobic amino acids now there are three hydroxyl containing amino acid and they are serine threonine and tyrosine these three are hydroxyl containing amino acids so then we have three basic amino acids lysine arginine histidine and two acidic amino acids we have aspartic acid and the glutamic acid then we have neutral amino acids that is cysteine which is polar uncharged, asparagine polar uncharged and glutamine which is polar uncharged amino acid. All of them are hydrophilic amino acids. Okay. So this is what is the classification of amino acids based on their side chain. Now we have one more classification of amino acid based on the nutritional requirement and that is essential and non-essential amino acids. Essential amino acids are they need to be taken in the diet because we cannot synthesize them in our body simply because we don't have enzymes to do so that can be 
memorized as private tim hall pvt tim hall so hydrophobic amino acids can be sorry essential amino acids can we can remember pvt tim hall that is pvt tim hall and that is private tim hall so in private tim hall p stands for phenylalanine it is not proline v for valine t for threonine another t for tryptophan there is no place for tyrosine here i for isoleucine m for methionine h for histidine a for arginine l for leucine and another l for lysine now there are two amino acids which are conditionally essential it means they need to be taken only during positive nitrogen balance so they are arginine and cysteine arginine and cysteine arginine and cysteine both are referred as semi essential amino acids about nitrogen balance i'll come up with another video because it takes long another 5 uh, minutes for me to explain it so thanks for watching i'll come up with positive and ni negative nitrogen balance later thank you